So when you go to buy a house, now I know that's not an everyday occurrence, but for those of you that have bought one recently or are out there looking for one, have you walked around the neighborhood where your house is at to see how many of the people that live there barbecue? <laughs> I, I bring that up because I don't know why I, I thought of that question, but I guess, uh, you know, it it can be important. I mean, we do it here all the time where I live. But my guest on this episode of Harford County living with Rich Bennett, she's a realtor. And that's one of the questions I ask because I guess if your neighbors do it, they're friendly and, well, they're going to come out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, I, I guess that's something I would look for. And I am happy to say that this episode is actually brought to you by Maryland Pickers. So if you need some junk removal done, if you need a dumpster rental, check out Maryland Pickers. Go to MarylandPickers.com or give them a call, 443-206-1859. Again, that's 443-206-1859. They actually have the Harford County Living Stamp of Approval if you look at the reviews, the reviews are phenomenal. Everybody trusts them. So, again, go to MarylandPickers.com or call them, 443-206-1859. Tell them Rich from Harford County Living sent you. Welcome to the award-winning podcast, Harford County Living with Rich Bennett, coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios. Each week, you'll hear interesting interviews, commentary, discussions, storytelling, and more. Here's your host, Marine Corps veteran, professional DJ, entrepreneur, podcaster, and my father, Rich Bennett. I'd like to welcome everybody to Harford County Living with Rich Bennett. So today... Again, I am sitting here with the beautiful, lovely Mrs. Maryland America, Julia Chang. And she has brought in another special guest, Mindy Pershalski. Pershalski, correct. Who is actually a realtor. Mm -hmm. And um, God, the real estate market now. Well, well, we'll go into that in a little bit. So first of all, how are you doing, Mindy? I'm doing well. Thank you. And, and, <laughs> and I you know, got to yell at Julia because she didn't tell you how this goes. She, well, I think um, she just wanted me to not think too much about it. As far oh, as, uh, she is going to ask I, you I, so. I you. I she did tell me. I sent her several emails of how it's going to go, what to bring. <laughs> uh, and she did her due diligence and listened to a past episode. That she, we had a conversation earlier this week, and she did say she wants it. She doesn't want to know too much. She she but she, yeah, it. but she didn't listen to a past episode of the ones with the people that you have brought in. So uh, you did not inform no. her about how you're going to put her on the spot. Oh, oh I don't even what? Know the spot. <laughs> well, you did with the last two people. Did I? What did uh, you, let's see. What did I do with Amanda? Oh, no, I didn't put Amanda on the spot, did I? Yeah. I th yeah, you asked oh, her some questions. Me? Okay, okay. Take Maybe it easy. You didn't. I, I can't know. remember. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, she's a simple that question. She's just going to ask you. She's just going to ask you, like, why do you love her? Right. Uh, oh no, that that was CJ. Never that mind. Was okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. She can ask How come you didn't make too. me breakfast this morning? Oh, oh no, that was him again too, wasn't that it? Was him oh, again. yeah. Okay. Why did you my laundry? Oh, yeah. All right. No, yeah. <laughs> never. Never mind. All right. So maybe she's not going to ask you those loaded questions. <laughs> I'm in trouble, aren't I? Uh. <laughs> uh, so all right. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into the real estate. You know where you're from. Sure. Uh, you know what it was like. Going to school. No, you don't have to go into all that. Unless you want to. That's up to you. But. Sure, sure. So, um, Julia knows this, but I actually was adopted from South Korea. And really? Yes, I was. Okay. And I uh, came over here to Maryland in 1982. So, I was almost five. Why do you keep bringing these young people on here, making me feel <laughs> I'm so young? Thank old? Thank you. Thank you. 1980s. Yeah. <sighs> Keep you fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-two. Yeah. I was. 
Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so um, I grew up in the Towson Parkville area. Oh, I'm um, sorry. No, I'm, I'm no, messing with you. It's my a parents good area. are still there. Um, and I met my husband actually when I was in high school, and he went to Cover Hall. He was a city boy. Go that, Cardinals. Yeah, uh-huh. And then um, from there, we lived temporarily for a short period of time in Baltimore City and then moved to Perry Hall where we purchased our first home in the early 2000s and we've been Bel Air residents for the past almost four years. So your son, uh, your son, your Mm -hmm. husband graduated from Calvert Hall? He did in 1997. Did Mm -hmm. he play any sports there? He swam. Okay. Um, but mostly he studied Taekwondo. He actually, uh, Julia's husband, his, uh, father was my husband's grandmaster. All right. You know what? Yeah. You keep bringing Long these people story. in there to study. And Long I'm history. Up, uh, all right. What's, what's the plan? Am, <laughs> you're all going to corner me one day or something like that. <laughs> we won't. We'll protect uh-huh. you. <laughs> okay. I like that. Even yes. Better. He will be yeah, very well protected. are very brittle, you uh. know, so. Um, well, she's holding out, but she's a, she's a black belt too. I'm a first degree. All right, I need to start. I'm going to have <laughs> and, to start and, bringing And this. our children also study. Uh, we have ninja children. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Holy cow. My husband's master, master Joe. He's a sixth degree black belt, yeah. Your husband? Mm-hmm. He is. <laughs> All right, Julia, I'm going to let you take the we show. We feel over. very safe, I, I know. Yeah. You're so well Next protected. Next question, Julia. You are so well protected. <laughs> wow. Uh, um... God, I wish I would have kept up with all that. So your husband, does he do the turkey bowl every year? We have not been in many years, and I've been to a handful. Okay. Um, but that would be fun if maybe he takes our son there. Do you know what the turkey bowl is? No, okay. Has a football game? Yes, because yeah, okay. yes. it's, it's been a rivalry since day one. It's Loyola and Calvert Hall. Okay. And every Thanksgiving mm-hmm. is the turkey bowl, which I think they play at Raven Stadium. Now, oh or at yeah. Least they have oh, it. yeah it's big oh yeah. and it they let me tell you they get a big crowd because my my brother is a calvert hall grad and goes every year oh, okay. at least i believe he does he may not have gone last year Did no he has to go okay. it's on thanksgiving day i believe so it yeah. is i think it is yeah oh, that's yeah it is it's um but yeah the crowd so i always anytime i hear that somebody went to calvert hall course i got a rag it's like yeah go dons and they're like oh no, yeah <laughs> loyola, loyola Don, is the dons yes and it, cardinals. calvert hall is the cardinals. cardinals and it just so happens that my son's grandfather on his mother's side was a don he Ooh. went to the loyola I think he, yeah i'm pretty sure <laughs> he went about, to loyola. what's a don is it an animal what is the Don? I don't know. The only time I hear uh, Don, any time I hear Don, I'm thinking of Italian. You know, you know, the Italian family. Oh yeah, the Don. I know. I know. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna see. You're like she's gonna look yeah. it up. She's gonna try. Don's? Loyola yeah. Don's. What's their mascot? What's Loyola Don's mascot? Don't they have like a dog? Yeah, there is no internet up here. Yeah, so it's going. It'll come pop up. Loyola Blakefield. Huh? That's the. That's the um, no. That it's a high, it's a high school. It's a Catholic Loyola high school. That's Loyola Blakefield in Ta- Towson. I don't know. I would call my minute. brother and ask him, but he's working. He'll yell. He's like, <laughs> right. "Why are you worried about the Dons? Uh, we don't need to talk you about that." Oh, I know. About, okay. <laughs> nah, so all right. So all right. So you and your husband got married. How'd you get into real estate? I mean, were you always doing real estate at high school and everything? No, I got into real estate when I was planning my wedding. Um, yeah. So I worked at, um, are you, you know, you've been to a Chili's before. Oh yeah. Okay. So for many years I was a corporate trainer, uh, for Chili's in White Marsh. Oh wow. And I opened up new restaurants, um, across the U S and this was in 92. This was in, no, this was in, uh, 2001 when I decided I wanted to get out of the restaurant industry um, it's a and hard industry. I wanted a nine to five job so I could plan my wedding and just get married. Um, and one of our regular clients was a real estate broker and came in and I just, you know, openly talked about what I wanted to do mm-hmm. eventually. 
And he gave me a job position um, at his office. And I started as a secretary, which was wonderful because I got to plan my wedding. <laughs> and then um, I slowly started to do other office work, um, administrative, uh, their advertising, because back in the day, we used to do paper advertising mm -hmm. for all of the upcoming properties. Right. Um, and I also did the, the bookkeeping. Really um, and then after doing that for a few months, I told myself, I can do this. I'm hmm. going to get my real estate license. And that's exactly what I did. I took a two-week accelerated program, got my real estate license, got married. And when I had my license, I already had my new married name. So I didn't have to go with the whole Change changing of the name. Around. And I had a difficult last name. Originally, it was Peugeot. P I G O T T. P I G G O T. Uh -huh. It was so difficult. Like a, that. Well, a lot easier people than your would name say now. Peugeot, Piggott. Tell your husband to change his Piggott, I know. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so I kept my last initial. So that was well, easy that, yeah, enough. That, yeah, that makes, yeah. So you, um, all your cards could have just said Mindy P. And yes. you still be fine. And I, <laughs> and I still joke to this day. I'm like, well, maybe I could just, you know, change it um, because you have it licensed through the state. And so I've thought about, I wonder if I can just shorten it. But, you know, people have known to know me mm -hmm. um, as Mindy. And I'm totally okay with that. Um, so if we're, the, the, with real estate license, do you have to renew it every year? Every two years. Every two you years. You have to renew okay. your license. You have to take continuing education classes. Mm -hmm. Wow. You have to be in good standing. Um, and that's all you need. And you need to be affiliated with a, a practicing brokerage in whatever state you're licensed in. Um, and that's what I do. I take my continuing education classes. And since COVID, I, I was um, a pref I preferred to go in person right. for classes. But it's so convenient taking all my classes online Virtu now. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> At your own pace. You don't have to sit in, you know, 15-hour sessions. Um, so it's... 15 it's hours? It's 15 hours to continue your education, yeah. A 15... One session is 15 hours. Well, you can go... Um, the fun thing we used to do was the Maryland State Convention um, where we would go to Ocean City. Yeah. And it would be like a three-day, maybe like two to three-day um, session where you could pick and choose what classes you wanted to sign up for. Okay. And then, of course, all of the um, vendors and um, real estate brokerages, they would have their own parties. So, so what year well did away. you get into it? 2002. 2002. So you were in it when years. all that stuff yes. went down. Uh -huh. Oh boy! Yes. <laughs> How so it was tough a whole was roller that? It, yeah. it was a roller coaster. Um, I I survived. I managed. Um, I well, was very fortunate good. when I obtained my real estate license. I immediately had um, friends that w were in the market to buy a home. Right. So since then, I've assisted those same people maybe on their second third fourth purchases already through the years so you're helping people not just buy a new home but also sell, sell. Mm -hmm. which and i'm sure leads. selling wise is probably up more than anything it is right however when they go to sell unless they're relocating out of state mm -hmm. it's hard finding them a home really mm -hmm. all the homes for sale i mean it seems like every time you turn around there's why is it so hard to find them a home? Well, because a lot oh, because of times of the they're, up, they're upgrading or uh, yeah, or okay. they're relocating to a different area. And since there's so many more buyers, they're up against a lot of additional competition. Okay. And when you have a home that you need to sell, oftentimes they're contingent on having to sell their home right. in order to use the, their equity to go towards their down payment. So, all right. Because obviously we don't want to go fall into the same trap that we did right, years ago. Correct. But how is, I'm seeing homes that are going for fifty, some even a hundred thousand more mm -hmm. than what they're worth. Mm -hmm. How in the world is that happening? The biggest difference between now and when the market did really crash uh -huh. um, is the fact that the buyers that are purchasing above list price or um, putting so much extra money down is because of that fact that they have that equity from a previous purchase or they're saving so they're to be able. The, yes. Okay. Instead so of the banks financing, aren't financing no, that different. No. Okay. Uh -huh. The banks have become a lot more um, strict right. um, in making Which sure good. that they're protecting the consumers because they okay. don't want that 
same situation to occur. And then the buyers are just more financially secure to be able to okay. make that investment. That's that's good to know mm-hmm. because, I mean, I'm seeing some of these houses as like, and they're yeah. going like and, that. And believe me, I have buyers in the same situation where multiple offers one after another and just not getting in. They're above list price or yeah. they're really um, tactful with what their negotiations are mm-hmm. um, and they're still not getting it. Because at the end of the day, the sellers want the highest and best. They want the easiest right. contract that's going to get them to closing. Um, and I would say for the most part, that is what's happening. Um, but now I've also seen where buyers go through that buyer's remorse stage yeah. where, you know, maybe this isn't the one for them. Um, they're starting to, you know, really regret. Maybe I should have had inspections. Um, I personally, for all of my clients, it's entirely up to them. I advise them as far as what other buyers are doing to make mm-hmm. their offers stand above the rest. But I feel mostly comfortable when they do perform all of their inspections because you don't know what you're buying. Yeah. And I'm not going to live there. It's their home. So I want them to feel comfortable and safe and know that they're making a good investment choice. All right. Now I got a crazy question mm-hmm. for you, and you may not be able to answer this because <laughs> this is something my wife and I always talk about. And for years, I always said if I moved, it'd have to be to the Carolinas, to okay. the mountains. She always talks about moving, but I told her there's only one rule. If we move now, we got to take our neighbors with us because <laughs> we, we have great neighbors. Uh-huh. In the real estate market, mm-hmm. have you ever seen anybody that's looking for a house actually go around and talk to their neighbors before they decide on buying? They do. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> because I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is they'll buy a new house because they love the house. Mm-hmm. Don't even bother to look who their neighbors are, or even into the HOA Mm -hmm. or anything like that, and they're miserable. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when I'm showing properties, um, if there's a neighbor outside, I'll Mm -hmm. approach the neighbor and I'll just engage in a, you know, just a friendly conversation. And that allows my client to then ask questions about the community, um, how long they've lived there. And it gives them a good vibe and feel of the area. Um, and my other suggestion I give to my buyers is just do random drive throughs um, right. doesn't have to be a morning time. Just go through in the evening, go through a, the, the weekend. weekend. Exactly. Nowadays they can't, they don't have time to do that yeah. because the home, as soon as it's listed, it's gone. Um, but I do have very diligent buyers that as soon as it's on the coming soon status, they will do their research and they'll do their drive throughs Tell them um, not to do their I research know, by I looking know. at social media. Though. I know, exactly. Oh, <laughs> they do. My clients oh, do. God. They'll look up social media and they're like, oh, so-and-so. I, that is a thing. I know everything about know. their business. Even HR. My friends well, in HR, mm-hmm. they look up. They're like, be careful. Like, social media is, is it's out there. an avenue mm-hmm. where people can get you know, like a window look into your life. Mm-hmm. Unadvertised so, information. Unadvertised information. But here's the thing with that. And again, like in Jobtown, I've been here since 66. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've seen a lot of stuff happen. And you get people that are new to the area and they're like, oh my God, what's going on? Did you, people racing down the road. It's like, <laughs> really? Come on. We used to drag race at yeah. places. I mean, it's just. What, what noise? What? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. That, that little background noise. Yeah. What's that? What's that loud boom? Right. Uh, uh-huh. Welcome to APG. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah sure, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Are, that, that shook my house. They should know better. Mm. Hello. You I mean, you well, nowadays, better. yes. I nowadays mean, in contracts, it's all disclosed. Where you move to, there are certain addendums and yeah. certain notices. So it really, a lot of weight should fall upon the buyers themselves to also do to their investigate, investigation. Yeah. Yes. And I don't mind because I have people ask me all the time about the area. Mm-hmm. And they'll ask me about certain certain parts because, mm-hmm. like I said, I grew up here. And you're biased too, you know. So it's good for the buyers. But I'll be to honest with research. them too, and I'll, I'll tell them because uh-huh. there's a crime site where you see yes. certain crimes. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I tell them, available. I said, look, if you see something that is assault or something like that, I wouldn't worry about that mm-hmm. as, as much as say a breaking and entering. Yes. Uh-huh. And look where that breaking and entering is. Right. Is it in a area where there's a lot more houses? Because uh-huh. I guarantee you where yeah. I live, anybody breaks into a house yeah. there, yeah. 
Number one, they're probably not going to make it out of the house because yeah. the neighbors, we all keep, right. an, eye keep an eye out each other. Uh-huh. Um, and the other thing I see is people, you know, because the sex offenders list, yes. you could pull that off. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it seems like an almost. That's more for the parents. That's what I look at. Right. But yeah. you, if you look at it, because nowadays, if you spank your child, mm-hmm. you have uh-huh. to register for the sex offenders list. No. Yes. I wasn't aware of that. It, it, it depends. It depends on if you're charged. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If if you if somebody if your kid calls up and says my father or my mother abused me they beat me. Yeah. Right away. That's you know. So it, it's it's kind of. Yeah. It, it's know, like, if yeah. yeah. But you see that, and I've I only say that because I've seen that happen with a couple of friends of mine. Wow. And oh they, goodness. yeah, but where they're, the mother and father weren't together and where the father had, he was old school, like me, you know, your kid does something wrong, yeah, that's mm-hmm. what he, he gets spanked. Mm-hmm. And, um, but they, the, they were separated and the mother had pressed charges and oh. everything and said, yeah, he's been beating my child. That's so awesome. what, um, because it is in the standard Maryland Association mm-hmm. of Realtors contract is to take a look at the Maryland Sexual Offenders Registry. Um, and I, even before I get my client to fall in love with a home, mm-hmm. I have them do that first because I don't want them to fall in love with the home. And then, by the way, right. you know, so the process in that, I, I, I like to educate my clients with everything um, first before mm-hmm. we actually go down that avenue of writing the contract. Um, and they'll tell me, you know, and they'll look. And then I just do a little, you know, reminder that they might, you know, you might find somebody and then you have to look at where they are in comparison to where your subject property right. is. And they may not stay there forever. Or you might buy a home and there's none registered around you. And then the next day you yeah, have one registered. Exactly. So, I mean, it's constantly um, changing and it's just more of an awareness for buyers. And I think too. a lot of it, too, is... Even if, with somebody who's been living there for a while, somebody new moves in, and vice versa, mm-hmm. communication. The it neighbors is. need to yes. talk. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, if, number one, if you do live next door to a sex offender, a murderer, or whatever, <laughs> serial killer, who knows, uh, talk to them because yeah. the more you know about that person, exactly. the better. The better. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can either, you know, like they can call you and Julia to, you know, come there and protect mm-hmm. them. Uh <laughs> Bring your husband, say, yeah. Look, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the seriously, a lot thing, of people don't talk, right. don't think about that, mm-hmm. and they need to. Mm-hmm. And I know um, there's a lot of areas that don't necessarily have homeowners associations, right. mandatory ones, but they have voluntary ones. And often, so my clients love that because that there's no homeowners that, that there's no HOAs, but right. sometimes when they have the voluntary HOAs, because that, that shows them that the community cares. Yeah. You know, you care about how your neighborhood looks mm-hmm. um, and, and having like the neighbor, just people like the keeping an eye out for each other. That. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I think, I mean, there's a lot of, on, I do see like where I live, we don't have a homeowners association, mm-hmm. but all the neighbors do. Watch right. it out, you know, because you are your own association, yeah, exactly. your, your own community. Um, and then the funny thing is, then you got the ones homeowners associations that are ran by management companies that aren't even in the state. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's and even some that are ran, and I've seen this before, where the homeowners association management company is right there, where the people live. And like the president of the homeowners association violates the rules themselves. The most. <laughs> it's like they're above the law. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's right. it, it, it's it's crazy. These bylaws, yeah. restrictions, and covenants is for everyone else except for me. <laughs> yeah. So, do you see more realtors getting into the field now? I mean, more people getting into the realtor field now. I, you know what? It's kind of slow. I really? there's been there's been a time when I notice a lot more mm-hmm. um, inquiries, and I've had lots of friends through the years or just acquaintances reach out to me and then I will give them the whole story, like the in-betweens and everything, because I think that um, a lot of people, they think, oh, I'm going to get my real estate license. You just show a few homes and done. No, No. people are trusting your professional 
advice and you're advising them on what they should do Mm -hmm. in preparation for their big investment, which is real estate. Um, And if you don't feel comfortable representing a client, then this might not be the deal for you. And what you do not learn in real estate school is there's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of paperwork involved. <laughs> um, yep. It does help if you can type. It does help. Um, See, there's secretary can... positions helped I know. you, didn't they? <laughs> um, and it does help to just have people skills. Yeah. Um, because, you know, buyers are coming to you or sellers are coming to you. And if you can't properly explain something, they're not going to feel comfortable. Yeah, you can't be yeah. antisociable and be a realtor. Right. These and are people's biggest it is. purchases. Yeah. And ever. they trust you as a professional. Right. And yeah. I mean, that's, I, I, cause unfortunately you have seen some people just get into it to make mm-hmm. the money. They don't really care about the customer. Oftentimes those are probably going to be the people that, that are it. listed on um, the Maryland state licensing board for complaints. Um, oftentimes we see those um, case studies in, um, like our continuing education classes for just unlawful acts. But and you can feel it. Like you feel when someone's like an icky salesy person. Not all the yeah. time. Sometimes no, sometimes I mean, they can some play buyers can be very they naive so and yeah, I mean they just or they just are have no no idea what they should be asking, mm-hmm. what they should be doing. And they just listen to yeah, everything this person says. And they yeah. are very trusting. Yeah. Yeah. Some people can be good con artists. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, true. Yeah. true, true, true. So, I mean, but something you just said, and I never knew this, mm-hmm. so it makes me wonder how many people buying houses know about it. You can. There's a website you can go to to find who these, mm-hmm. let's say, evil ones are. Evil. <laughs> yeah, so um, there is, if you go to the DLLR website mm-hmm. um, for Maryland, you can see any complaints um, and any, yeah. I did not know that. Violations. No, I so you just I, look them up by name. You can. Um, I don't. I've. I don't know if you can do it by name. It's more by case. By case. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But should, oftentimes, I, yeah, I think the most common money. one would probably be they didn't um, properly handle uh, earnest money deposit mm-hmm. on yeah. a home. Yeah. 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 So go ahead and write that check out to. Me directly, right. and then deposit that into my personal account versus deposit it into a escrow company or the brokerage, right? They, but like the person, the consumer, they're so not, trusting. No, yeah. they don't think about and it. And then they they lose their you've deposit. Established that relationship mm-hmm. with them, and they make you feel good, and mm-hmm. like, I trust you. I will give you know, hand you my money. Here's my money. Exactly. Well, and the other thing, because I got a lot of friends that are realtors, and I've seen some of them complaining about this, where um, somebody they knew sold their house or bought a new house and they didn't contact them. It's it like, hurts well, you. It does. Yeah, but you know, how can I do that when my other friend is exactly. too? It's like, it depends. Yeah. I, and, and in your, in your case, when you have so many people that, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you just go with who you feel the most comfortable with. Right. But on, on like the receiving end, it, it hurts them, you know, because they think it's more, it's beyond just a, a, a transaction. Yeah. It's loyalty and friendship. Um, yeah, and history. I, yeah. I mean, when I bought my house and I bought it eighty five. Yeah. In eighty five, I used because I ended up buying my parents' house. Okay. Oh. So I used a neighbor of ours. Right. But we had three people in that court that were all licensed were real all, estate agents. Yeah. And the one I know, I knew a lot longer, mm-hmm. but. It's weird. I mean, it's just. I think at the end of the day, though, if you're a professional in the business, mm-hmm. any even with Taekwondo, we have always mm-hmm. said if if someone does not end up going to us, we don't take it personally. You yeah, can't. you can't because there's right. so many business, out there. You have to be, yeah, that's the business. But you have to grow that fix. Yeah, thing, mm-hmm. you know, and not take it personally. That's my two cents. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. Something else you said, and I didn't realize this. You said so. If you're a realtor, you have to be attached to a brokerage. Yes, because you need to have a brokerage that you're affiliated with to hang your real estate license in. Okay. So just because you're a salesperson, you're not a licensed broker. There are certain requirements in order for you to obtain your broker's license. So you can, in fact, own your own brokerage 
Okay. If you've earned that title. Okay. So the, the yes. people I see to see they own their real estate yes. company are actually uh huh. Brokers. And there can brokers, be, brokers, and there can be brokers. associate brokers and okay. licensed brokers, but they still choose to work under a brokerage. Okay. But they're also um, advance their education to get that next level of um, title. Okay. And something else you said earlier, mm-hmm. when you got out of the restaurant business, yes. you were looking for a nine to five job. I was. Is real estate really a nine to five it job? It was not, but okay. <laughs> to plan my wedding, that's why I wanted a okay. nine to five. And then when I was getting married, I didn't have to be nine to five. And that's what chose, that's what decided, um, that's why I decided to get into the real estate business so on average how many hours you would you say you work (laughs) i've actually never sat down and worked this through because it's not like nine to five at all and oftentimes i'll be responding late at night or early in the morning working Weekends. weekends evenings yeah um definitely at least 40 hours Okay. Um, but it's not like a solid, consistent 40 hours where I'm just tired. Um, right. You just go with the flow. You yeah. know, it's real estate market, you know, you it's a roller coaster. Hours, it day, is. Three hours you just go next, with the flow. The um, it, it, it really does. Uh huh. Yeah. Sure. So, on average, I would say 40 to 60 hours a week. Okay. Mm-hmm. And with the, you don't have to answer uh-huh. this, but I mean, it can't be hourly. No, is it salary it's or is entirely it commission, commission based. Straight commission, commission based. based okay. Yes. So when you are a licensed real estate agent, um, you are self employed. I, I, I was yeah. going to ask you that. You're so self employed. You, so you get a 1099. Uh-huh, at the I end have of a the 1099 year. at the Which end. Which is of the year. good because then you can list it as my, your own business. My expenses, it, exactly. Um, but you have to have good bookkeeping. Right. Um, and be responsible with what you're putting out. Um, and there's a lot of expenses, you know, when mm-hmm. you're a real estate agent, I mean, advertising, when you do your marketing, when you have, uh, property signs, photos, lock boxes, gas, um, just everything that it adds up. And then also when you're a licensed real estate agent, um, you want to be a member of a local real estate board mm-hmm. and I'm affiliated with the Hartford County real estate board and they have annual dues. And then you have national dues. If you actually want to use a designated realtor right. title. Um, and so there's, um, and it's worth it when you're yeah. in it and it's your business, it's worth it. And Ooh. it's an expense. But it's and it's like with any business, you gotta mm-hmm. put out money to make money. Exactly. And the thing do it smart though. Mm-hmm. Be smart about it because there are people that'll take the shortcuts and try to do the stupid thing. Right. And then wonder why they're not making the money. Mm-hmm. Mm. Smart advertising, <laughs> smart marketing. That's where it's all about. And it is running her own business. I mean, you yeah. just, she just listed everything. She's a one woman show who does her own marketing, her own advertising, her own branding, her own you know, driving around. That is, paperwork, yeah. Her own, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot that is show. one thing that I pride myself <laughs> in, you know, being licensed for 19 years um, and being a mother to three. Um, mm-hmm. I just, I love that one-on-one um, relationship that I build with my clients where I am with them from start to finish. So any um, any updates, it's coming directly from right. me. Any um, issues, it's coming directly from me, you know. Um, and, you know, but when business gets busy, um, uh, there's a lot of services out there um, that can assist with the back end of things. Right. Um, and I've thought about doing that uh, just because that's, you know, my whole vision was once my youngest got into school, which he is now, he's in mm-hmm. kindergarten, um, I really wanted to take my business up a notch. Um, and, you know, I'm just thinking about adapting right. um, to the demand and just, you know, real estate now is entirely different from when it was when I started. Um, now consumers can find immediately a home yeah on their phone you know or yeah, that's true. you know they can find it and they're usually the ones sending the the listing to their agent and saying i want to see this one before the agent actually realizes it's on the market um so it's just i just need to adapt all right so let me ask you this so if somebody is going to buy a house or sell a house and they don't know any realtors mm-hmm. how would they go about finding like 
strictly you because a lot of times if they go to a company website, mm-hmm. there's a ton of different realtors mm-hmm. you can choose. Right. But every realtor is different. I think unless they know somebody in a particular area or mm-hmm. a particular state, the most common method would just be type them in Google, like search for homes in a certain particular area. And the first one that kind of pops up Mm -hmm. is who they contact. And then whether or not they establish a working relationship with that first contact, it's, you know, it may happen, it may not. Um, But I think oftentimes buyers will just start working with the first person that they engage with. So, because you're now, are Mm -hmm. you allowed to say the company you're associated with? Sure. Okay. Because <laughs> well, I, I know I've, uh, before I've uh, I've tried to get realtors on here okay. a lot. Yeah. And it's like each company is different. They they well, you got, we need a list of what questions you're going to ask because this is what the company wants. No. Um, so no. all right, what's the name of the company? I'm with so? Cummings and Company Realtors. Um, Cummings Cummings and Company. Cummings and Company Realtors. Cummings and company. Um, yeah. <laughs> Blah. Cummings and David Company. David Cummings. He started. Um, his own brokerage, I want to say, over over twelve years ago, okay. um, and I just started to see they're the blue and gold signs. Um, I know the sign, name or the will recognize yeah it. yeah the blue sea. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. I, I know the name. Who who was he with before he I, get, went on? I there, do you don't know, know because okay. I've been um, with Cummings and Company for about three years. Okay. Now, um, and he's just an amazing broker to be licensed right. under. Um, but I've always been the type of real estate agent where I primarily work from home. Um, mm-hmm. I have an in-home office, and then Smart. most of my appointments are out on the road. Yeah. You know, so I can get a lot more done. Um, but it's nice to have an in-office location yeah. too. Um, but our our brokerage is very. Um, it, it's we have many offices throughout the state of Maryland. So if I ever need to meet a client to you go over go a contract or offices. conduct a closing, I can go to any of those offices, right. mm-hmm. which is good. So with that being uh, Cummings and Company, and I'm sure you have your own website as well, right? I do. Okay. so And not just Cummings & Company, but any real estate company, brokerage, whatever. Since you do your own advertising, you're traveling and all that, do they reimburse you for anything? Or is that something? It's a business You expense. have to know your taxes mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. how to do your taxes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or at least use a good <laughs> You should have person. a CPA, yes. Right. Yeah. CPA. Thank you. God, uh-huh. I cannot think of the... <laughs> Man, I, I, right. I'm, drawing a, I'm drawing a blank here. Right. Yeah, the tax person. The tax man. The tax person, yeah. Tax man. yeah. Call the tax yeah. man. All right, Julie, I'm going to allow you to take over here for a little bit now. Okay, so um, something that wasn't discussed that I do want to highlight is that... Is, what, what do you love her about her? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Everything. No. She, she has a very good... She's a great cook. She's a great baker. That's something we did not hit, so I want to talk about that. Oh. She, so. You, yeah, here we you, go with the food again. Like the food. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's one area. And then the other area is that from patio design to, like, interior, <laughs> like, not in, more than interior design is great, but it, how would you call it? Like, architectural The, the functionality of a home. A home. Yes. So. Okay, let's. What do you want to talk about first? Because I can talk about like all, food. Save the food, food. for oh, save the food, food for. Oh, God, yes. why are you going to talk? Oh no, okay. yeah, save the food for last when it's getting closer <laughs> to lunchtime. Yeah. So we'll go with um, the design part. So first, um, patio. We basically we have like a few, a few people who just like copied her patio design. Us included. We basically went to their house and was like, yeah, uh, we just want this. The Mindy the Mindy plan. I must <sighs> say, CJ did do, you know, planning too. I have to give my hu- husband some credit. He did really well. You did really well, honey. Um, <laughs> but like the stone, a lot of it was... Um, the conception of... Inspired yes. from her patio. So she's really good at like looking at a space and saying, well, I picture the kids running here and let's have this. Or when guests come over... You know, we're going to add this part. Maybe you have a picture. So you designed it? Yeah. I designed our own patio. I did. Um, and the company that I had went with, they came out and then they had their, I guess, 
designer、mm -hmm. that kind of said, "Oh, well, maybe you should angle your seating this way." And I said, "No, this way. It has to be on this direct angle, right. like right here where I'm standing. This is how I want it to face." And so I did. I just printed off graph paper and I. Pretty much drew out the design of my patio and how I wanted the lighting and how I wanted the steps, and they did it, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And this is something that、huh. we invested into our property last year because because of the pandemic, all the children were home. They were、right. doing homeschooling,、um, virtual learning. My husband working at home. I was working at home, and we just needed. To utilize the space that we had,、mm -hmm. which was our backyard area,、um, and that's what we did. We invested into our property. We installed a nice, gorgeous patio that I love. I it just makes me so happy when I look out there. My kids love it.、Um, we had fence installed because we also got a pandemic puppy, which is a dog that you get during the pandemic,、right. um, and we love him. And it's just it's. A wonderful use of what we have,、mm -hmm. um, and since then I've had one of my clients. She asked because apparently my patio was on the company's website. As you can say their, the company if you want、uh, to, Montana Concrete Pro, and、okay. um, they they said I want the Mindy patio, but their backyard <laughs> is their layout is reverse of ours in、right. a completely different area in Bel Air, and it's. Pretty much the same as our patio design, but reversed. Okay.、Um, and they love it too.、Um, and then, so she's good with that, right? And then, like in her home too,、um, can you describe like? The, oh, the the, 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 the dry bar, bar area. Okay. The, I'm sorry. The what? <laughs> the <laughs> so where where I live, um, most of the homes it was standard to have two story family rooms. Right. Um. You know, showing homes, knowing my children and our family needs, I did not want two story anything because noise travels. I want to be able to entertain, have good time with my adult friends,、um, be able to decorate or just do anything without the little eyes looking down、mm -hmm. over the railing. You know, and so、um, I decided I wanted to enclose. Our second floor、um, and utilize that space as another bedroom,、um, and then、uh, we had a little recessed area in our kitchen、mm -hmm. that would have been like you could have like a desk there or just an open area or you know just free space. And、right. I decided I wanted to utilize that as a dry bar area where I have my coffee machine set、okay. up, a little you know beverage fridge,、yeah. countertop. Cabinets,、um, wine shelves. That's a good idea. And it fits with our flow of、right. the kitchen because the kitchen will always be the heart of the home for me and for my family. And just that's what I gravitate to is the kitchen area. So basically, what I'm hearing is, if you ever get out of real estate, <laughs> your next job is going to be interior design and architectural design, and or cooking. No, and and, and. oh yeah, I, got, I, I forgot about the cooking. <laughs> Well, okay, wait. All right.、Yeah. So, with the, so with your outdoor patio,、mm -hmm. do you have an outdoor kitchen as well? Oh my gosh, that's one of my dreams.、Um, oh. I don't necessarily.、Yeah. Right、it is. I don't necessarily need an outdoor kitchen, but I, I. Oh gosh, my husband's not going to like. <laughs>、uh, okay. Um, so I've been on him. I'm like, we need a grill. We need a grill. Where we lived before in Perry Hall, I cooked on our outdoor grill. Probably nine months out of the year. Wait a minute, was it a real grill or an outdoor a, oven? It was just a char. No, just、um, like a gas propane. Okay, so it's an outdoor grill, oven. Outdoor, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not a grill. But still, <laughs> like I know, but we did have the charcoal、um, grill. But yeah, that just took too long for no, me. No, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. I know. So every now and then we do. He, yes,、so、we have used that. The remember I'm saying this? I have to explain.、Uh -huh. I saw a picture of him in his backyard. He has li literally six grills. Seven. Seven,、okay. because they all have their own purpose, and they yeah, and yeah. they are lined up like you have rows.、Oh. Yeah, and I still need more. So he's like a grill master. Oh, but all, there's everything, nothing I everything appreciate. Everything's charcoal, appreciate with the exception that,、right? of the blackstone.、Uh -huh. That's perfect because it's kind of hard to have a yes. But and, and I will be honest. Is it blackstone? Is that like that's a flat the griddle?、Top? Yeah.、Oh, gosh. Yeah. You could. I don't know what that is. It's, it's a, a flat, it's a griddle. It's, a, it's, it's a, just a griddle. A flat top bocce grill. 
No. Well, yeah, similar. Similar where it's flat, similar. but you can cook anything. Oh, yeah. we like, yeah, And it's actually not mine. It belongs the to the Lions Club. Pancakes. Pancakes like, and sausages. Sausages. Oh, yeah. We got it. It, it, Me? it belongs to the Meats? Lions Club. We got yeah. it strictly for, like, our breakfast of, breakfast of Santa oh, okay. to do all the pancakes, bacon, and all. Oh. It's 36 inches. There you can fit it's a amazing. lot. Amazing. Okay. But no, my own I would love to have one of those. The smoker. Mm hmm. And. I had I the two Weber's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But no, that, and the only so, reason is it's easy. Just take get the chimney, yes. put the charcoal in. Within 15 minutes, my charcoal's ready to go. So I've been eyeing up. Uh, now, do you have the ones that have the pellets? Do you use pellets? Well, <laughs> I used to say <laughs> okay. that because I always wanted the Traeger. Okay. And then my buddy got one. Okay. Pellets are expensive. Yeah. And I forget how many bags he went through. Just when, to. To season it or whatever. And um, it's great that you can go out there. That's good hit to the know. Start button because I think that's what my husband was looking. Well, into. tell oh, him to look okay. at the master bill. Okay. Because why do we always have to talk food? No. Anyway, it's okay. We so, always end up talking food. food. So uh, my brother, because I've always gotten on my brother because uh-huh. he has an outdoor oven okay. too. You know, gas grill. And I always told him, say, Sean, you have to get <laughs> a real grill." Right. So he calls me one day. He's at Lowe's or Home Depot, one or the other. I can't think of it. <laughs> And he's like, hey, man. He said, what do you know about this master built? I said, master built what? He said, it's a smoker. I said, okay. I said, charcoal? He said, oh, it's got a hopper on the side. I said, oh, it's a pellet one. No. I was like, give me the model. So I pulled it up right. real quick. And I'm looking, I said, man, this thing is nice. Okay. So I'm shying away from the Traeger now. I'm looking into this master okay. built because it takes... So it's got the hopper like the Traeger, right. but you can use hard lump charcoal oh. r- or briquettes or even wood. I like that. Yeah. So oh, you're like getting that, that tr- you know, I think I think real wood gives you a true smoke yeah. flavor better than the pellets do. Like um, the, the hickory. And yeah. Like the- but I, it, I told my wife, if I get that, that's something where, you know, if because she told me the other day I need to get a gas grill. It's like, no. <laughs> she said, well, you need to grill more, especially for just, you know, mi- you know, for the three of us. I was like, eh, okay. Because I'm the type to where, uh, like, Halloween's coming up yeah. for us. So we're, we're already talking. We're going to start at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Me and my friends, and uh-huh. we're just going to sit back there. We're going to smoke stuff. Uh-huh. We're going to grill stuff. Awesome. And then come trick-or-treating time, right. the only thing that's going out front is grilled chicken. Right, okay. Because we're going to be eating everything. Right. But we do. We we just, all of us get together and just. Food. It's yes. food. That's what, it just brings everyone together. Yeah. And when I think of, um, like, I love anything social, but it has to have food. And yeah. even my oh, neighbors yeah, yeah. have come to know me where they're like, oh, well, you know, Mindy, Mindy's, it's not just going to be cheese and crackers. It's going to be like everything in between. And it's not, it's just, that's what makes me happy. Yeah. Like feeding people. And I love and appreciate food so much that it just, why not? I share it. So you're always trying different things too? I, I, I do. I do. All right. Um, and okay. I enjoy it. Right? This is going to be fun <laughs> now. I'm so excited. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, all right. What's, so do you like to make different recipes of stuff that people haven't tried? Such as, give me... All right. For example, like the other week, I made a, and don't laugh at okay. me, okay. a bacon bourbon pumpkin pie. Ooh. Oh, like that things. sounds really interesting. See, That's you're the good. first two to say that. Bacon Everybody else and is like, bourbon. Bacon no. Well, well, because you've heard of, yeah. Well. You've and heard of like mapled right. bacon. Yeah. Um, And you've had like sweets cupcakes with bacon mm-hmm. and it's so good and alcohol and chocolate or so that sweets go well that there was sounds no chocolate in there though that, well, that sounds good that but sounds I'm, good i mean bacon goes with everything it does yes, bourbon goes with everything yes <laughs> so and pumpkin that makes sense yeah it, good but job. it, it sounds oh, like a very guy, good we did it for beer night and the guys tore into it the only thing is you know because of pumpkin you pie after you cook it you're supposed to put it in the fridge pecans yeah. Well, the recipe Candy I saw, they put cheese on, on top. top. It's like, hmm. I um, yeah, I didn't do the cheese. Same as I, I've, I've never actually had apple pie with ice cream. With cheese. I've I heard about. Pie with cheese? Yes, somebody Who, told me that the other day. Thing? Well, I've eaten apples uh, with cheddar cheese, and yeah. it's delicious. I've, really? Yes. I've you never slice done the that. apples apple with cheese? a. 
Oh my yeah. gosh, it's good. I've had apples, and cheese, apples and butter. Like yeah. Apple I've had apples and butter. chocolate and, and apples and peanut and butter. Apples butter and, but no, but apples and cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese. Not okay. American cheese, not Colby Jack. American uh, cheddar cheese. Okay. Sharp cheddar cheese with apples. Oh, yeah, that's good. It's I, good. I, I had that yesterday. Right, so you so have I, to try that. And now it's your turn because right, I gave right. you one of the strange things I made. Well, everybody um, said it was strange. I don't know if I, if I ever made any weird things. All right, what's your top thing? dish? Okay. You created things like kimchi quesadilla, kimchi burger. Oh, yeah. Ooh, okay. Really? So, yes. Popcorn and Kim. Oh, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Which is, you can explain. Which I, so I'll, I'll just. If I get a craving for something, mm-hmm. I'll just, okay, I'm going to whip something up, and then I go with it. And, um, like, sometimes I'll Google it and be like, has this ever been created? Or <laughs> or if I like something. You need to start a YouTube yeah. channel. Or if, I, or if I eat something or I see a recipe for something, mm-hmm. I'm like, how can this be elevated? Or right. how can it just have a little bit extra? I look at it and um, I'm saying, how can I smoke this? Oh, <laughs> that, Seriously, that's what I do. You would get along great with my next door neighbor. He's like, <laughs> he smokes really fantastic ribs. Really great ribs. Oh. And I actually got him hooked on, um, he and his wife, I got them hooked on Korean food. Um, which is a thing that I love to share, just food in general, but um, Korean food I have a like a deep rooted passion for, mm-hmm. um, and um, I've pretty much I'll I'll cook anything, I'll cook anything. So the would you say popcorn and Kim? So, yeah. yeah. So what is that? okay. Well, I'm going to take you back. So there's this restaurant that um, Julie and I, we loved to go to when I lived in Perry Hall. Um, and they had this popcorn on their What was, on the, their name? Menu. What was the name of the restaurant? Lips Girl. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're coming up here. Yeah. Yeah. So they had this appetizer. Appetizer. Like appetizer. Bites. Right. I That's know, easy I'm hungry. So hungry <laughs> I, mean, I can't talk. My drool. Um <laughs> And it was popcorn, like gourmet popcorn, popcorn, right. and then they put truffle oil and Parmesan and seasoning. And I had asked them if they could do that, but with their French fries. Hmm. And they did. They brought it out, and I believe it was a manager, and he had asked who was the one that requested the truffle fries. And I raised my hand, and I said, it was me. And then he's like, they're really good. <laughs> Shortly after that... And they probably don't remember this, but I remember this because it happened. Shortly after that, truffle fries were on the menu. Really? Mm-hmm. So I will take credit for that. See, now when you said popcorn and Kim, Oh, I'm and fake. garlic, I forgot to mention. Oh, garlic, garlic is fresh with anything. Garlic, garlic is good with anything. Minced yes. fresh garlic. Oh. My wife got on me the one time because when my brother and his wife were living there, I, I, I was making breakfast. I made scrambled eggs with garlic in it. Hey, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they always got on me, but that's, that's nasty. It's like, but did they garlic. eat it? I don't remember. Oh, I know. If, like, they, if they didn't, and I did, I'll I don't let food go to right. waste. No, but when you said popcorn and kim, at first yes. I'm thinking popcorn and kimchi. Oh, oh no. So kimchi. this is um, it's um, seaweed. Okay. Um, roasted, seaweed. roasted seaweed, but Salt instead of oh. it's like these seaweed flakes, and I mix it all up in the popcorn, and it the um, seaweed flakes has sesame oil and sesame seeds, and it has salt <laughs> on there, and it's good. Ooh. So that was my I was just craving it, and I just mixed it up, and it wasn't heavy like mixing seaweed with rice or you know something right. too dense. Um, and it was a perfect me snack because everyone else was in bed and asleep so i didn't have to share i was watching a tv show <laughs> my dog was next to me and i was just snacking away oh god yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. hungry because it is lunch. we are hungry. yeah <laughs> all right so what's your what's your top dish to go to to make um my favorite is because also my children love it it's um korean short ribs Kalbi. mm-hmm mm-hmm <gasps> All right, so explain to everybody what the difference between Korean short ribs are. and It's the marinade. It's the marinade right. and the way that but the, the, the ribs are cut, it's L.A. style cut. So where, you don't use baby back ribs though, right? No. Right. Um, it's it's the way that it's the cut of meat is where they actually cut through the bones, mm-hmm. not with the bones. So that you cut through the bones and they're thin slices. Um um, Greens Butcher, which is um, mm-hmm. in, in Kingsville, Kingsville. Yeah. I've gone to them um, throughout the years, and every time I place an order, they do a great job at cutting the meat for me because you can't find this at 
local markets regularly. Right. Um, so unless pork, I want to drive, it it's ribs? beef. It is, oh, it is beef, it is ribs. beef ribs. Okay. Yes. But it's the Korean marinade that it just makes it. So what, and it's the whole social, again, food is that social um, enjoyment where it's a process. Mm-hmm. You know, you have um, the process of cooking the meat, cutting the meat, building the meat onto like um, seaweed or lettuce right. or right. anything or just eat it plain. Um, and my children, they'll just like eat the meat right off the bones and now, do you make your barbecue from scratch? Well, it's not barbecue sauce, um, but it is oh. marinade. And I do make that well, I'm from sorry, scratch. I'm sorry, I yes. the marinade. Uh-huh, yes. So what, are you allowed to tell us what's in the marinade? Sure, it's, okay. pretty, it's pretty common. I mean, this is like a staple um, staple ingredients for mm-hmm. a lot of Korean marinades, but um, soy sauce, um, sesame oil, um, ginger, garlic. Um, I use, in my recipe, I use coffee. I use coffee Not as a coffee meat tender. Grants, but actual coffee brewed brand, coffee. Brewed coffee okay. as a tenderizer, um, because as tenderizing agents, a lot of times um, in Korean recipes, they'll call for pear or apple. Uh-huh. Um, but I'll use coffee and I use sugar. I use raw sugar. Now, what made you think of that? To use that? Um, well, because I've had Kona rub steaks, which okay. I'm delicious. N- I've never had you. Okay. Um, It's just that taste. Like, you don't taste... I've made it for you many times. And everyone that's come over, you do not taste the coffee. But it does tenderize the meat. Okay. See, the reason I ask that is because, like, the one time I made steaks. Mm -hmm. And usually I'll just use SPG, salt, pepper, garlic, Mm -hmm. powder. But one time I also used coffee grounds. Mm -hmm. And my wife's like, you don't use coffee in anything like that. But you do. A lot of your cowboy rubs... Have yes, that. uh-huh. And it's but, but brewed coffee, you need it, I, but ooh, you need man. it, but you I think when if you're going to add it in something like that it needs to be super finely. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Because if you now you have to try go to a steakhouse if they have Kona rub, um Kona beans, um that that's one of my husband's favorite steaks is a Kona rub steak. So now I got different things going through my mind. Yeah. yeah I got, uh-huh. What to cook this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I want to try. With so the- you were talking about sauces like barbecue sauce, right? Oh, yeah. That is on my to-do list is I want to make my own barbecue sauce. Um, I love. Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's so so my thing is it has to have heat, but not too much not heat. Not too much, right? And I a love bit sweet. a little bit of sweet. Mm-hmm. You have yes. a recipe, don't you? Uh-huh. Huh? You have a recipe to do you? Do you? Does, your, does your husband smoke cigars? He does. He does. He does. Tell him to try uh, to make a cigar ash barbecue sauce. Okay. Wait, cigar, cigar ash. Cigar yes. Ash? Yes. Sauce. The actual. Ash yes. In the barbecue sauce. Yes. Oh. Trust me. You'll be blown away. Okay. I know. And I'm like, you can, there's all kinds of recipes you okay. can find for it. But yeah, cigar, cigar ash, ash. Barbecue. Yeah. Because okay. I always, I mean, I always make my own barbecue right. sauce too. I don't smoke cigars as much, mm-hmm. so I'll make it every, maybe every few years. But, but nothing if, goes to waste. No. Nah. <laughs> but like, for instance, the one year I decided to make, I saw a recipe for peanut butter and jelly ribs. Okay. And of course, I you know I changed it a little bit. I didn't use jelly; I used orange marmalade. Okay. A little bit of chipotle sauce, mm-hmm. and of course, a little bit of bourbon. Right, right, right. But put that on the rib. I had five. This was Halloween. I had five racks of ribs. I got one rib. One single rib. One rib. That's all I got. They Your were guests gone. Devour them. <laughs> like that. No, sir. I mean, <laughs> let me get. But people sauce. laugh at me, especially my wife. They'll be like, "That just sounds nasty. That's disgusting." And people devour it. I think the only thing that they didn't devour one year for Memorial Day, because my neighbors kept saying, well, <laughs> yes and no. I was in a hurry. And my neighbors like, well, just do burgers. I said, okay. So I, I did the ground beef and everything. And if there's leftover beer or whatever, that's always good for, that's what we call our cooking beer. Yeah. Or put out the fire in the grill beer. Right. <laughs> um, so I had this beer. It was Nasty, I forget what it was. And I put that in with the ground beef. I think I went a little bit too heavy on the salt because, you know, I just. Okay. Actually, no, I didn't use salt. I used Montreal steak seasoning. Okay. okay. Which I went heavy on. And them burgers are nasty. Oh. They were nasty. 
but I learned my lesson. Right. Now, everybody, <laughs> my, my burgers I make now, the past few times I've made them, everybody loves them. They mm-hmm. said they want them again. So it's just regular ground beef, sweet Italian sausage. Okay. Mix it together, salt, kosher salt, mm-hmm. pet ground, fresh ground pepper, and granulated garlic, mm. and onion powder. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Done. And just don't, I don't make them thick anymore. I used to. Uh-huh. I just roll up in the ball, throw it on the grill, smash Pat it, it down. down. That's it. So you you like the okay? So I'm the same way as far as like how I form my burger patties. Mm-hmm. Where I've had them where they're more rounds. Yeah, and I, I I I used to do that. It had I to be perfect, me round I like and it thick. I like it where every single area of the bread has the meat. It has to have. And if it's overflowing, that's fine. Yes, and. Have you ever stuffed your burger patties with cheese? Or you used to all the time. Rocky okay. burgers. Oh, I'm sorry. So that was, delicious. That was, a, that was a recipe uh, my father yeah. had. Yeah, okay. And my, he always called my niece Rocky. Okay. So he's like, I'll make Rocky burgers. But yeah. So I've made um, kimchi burgers where I'll do the cheese in between with kimchi, diced up kimchi inside the patty. Okay. So it cooks and then you take that first bite and everything just oozes out. It's delicious. All right. I've never had kimchi. Okay. So what exactly is kimchi? Because I'm dying to try it. And should because I've seen it in the jars uh-huh. at the grocery store. Is that? It's so, not as good as homemade. So yeah, I exactly. That being your first. So yeah, don't homemade. Try that. All right. So, yeah, it's be so what is it? How do I make it? Kimchi is just, I mean, there's a whole broad amounts of different kimchis, right? Oh. But Fermented the, cabbage. Yeah. The most common is Napa cabbage. And it's prepared with uh, ginger, mm-hmm. um, garlic. F- I use fish, fish sauce, fish oil. and oh, fish, fish, yeah, sauce? fish sauce, sauce. Yeah, um, because it, that offers like the the saltiness too. But um, you brine the cabbage, and then you make the mixture. And the most important ingredient is the red pepper. It's uh-huh. the Korean red and pepper. It's not yeah, the American with. It's not like what you get at pizza. Where you put on right. top of, right? It's like finely, finely ground. Um, so There's no s- seeds. It's just no the seeds. pepper flakes. And so you mix it all up. And then um, the Napa cabbage, when you freshly prepare the kimchi, it's crunchy. Like you have a good crunch to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually prefer both. I like fresh when it's freshly made. I and I also like the fermented where it really develops that deep sour. Mm-hmm fermented taste to it um and that's really great to put in stews or to cook and add to another Don't dish eat it by itself um can i can't i itself. eat it by okay. itself okay. i love it i love the taste you can um, make fried rice from it mm-hmm. you can do a lot you can make it into like a pancake scallion pancake uh-huh. and i've had a i've made it usually when i make it i make a case of napa cabbage um which is 12 heads of cabbage and i quarter them and so it's it's a whole ordeal. It takes me at least twelve hours, and I'll do it myself. I yeah, and I usually start wow. this when the kids are in bed, and I'll finish in the morning. So how long do you leave it sitting in the brine for? I flip it. So every thirty minutes, I'll go ahead and rotate them. It? I'll rotate the cabbage. Oh, so you put the whole head of cabbage in the brine? I quarter them, and okay. then I put okay. them. But you don't completely immerse them. Um, you, you just let the water come out of the cabbage enough okay. where it starts to wilt. And then I go ahead and rotate them and then you have to wash Rinse them well. or else it's going to be too salty. So salty. Mm-hmm. That's, that's always been my hiccup. Yeah. So what do you eat kimchi with? Everything. Everything. I eat, right? really? Oh gosh. Pizza, spaghetti, eggs. Kimchi pizza. So last year during the pandemic, I, um, I oh, had There is my, such a thing. Yeah, in Korea, there's there's kimchi everything. Kimchi everything. Burger. Kimchi oh. burger, McDonald's, everything. Yeah. You can find kimchi hamburgers. Uh-huh. And what? Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, in Korea. Oh, I was going, I thought in you Korea. meant in Korea. In Korea, no. Okay. Korea. And um, last oh, year, so that's not pandemic. a new thing. If I decide to make kimchi burgers, I'm not yeah. doing anything new. For you, it is. Well, yeah, but I like to come up with stuff that nobody's had. Oh. Well, how many of your friends have had? That's true. So oh, yeah. it would be, be so same as, yeah, my neighbors, they've never had kimchi until I made it. And now they love it. Interesting. Uh huh. It's a love-hate. I might have to make that on Halloween. It's I might have to take make my regular burgers mixed with if kimchi. If they like spicy, maybe what I would suggest is put it on the side and let them garnish their burgers with it. 
Just chop it. Oh, finely. I never thought about that. Yeah. That could be good too. Uh huh. And then, I mean, you can put it on any Toffees. French fries. Julia had mentioned Kim. Kimchi quesadillas. Oh, yeah. All right. So, all right. <laughs> I, uh, okay. So, because I'm going to the grocery store after this. Uh-huh. And, and I know that where I go to, they have it. So, if I get it in the jar, am I supposed to drain all the liquid? No. No? No. Keep it. You can put mm-hmm. that in, like, in the stew. Or I put a little bit in the fried rice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't really drink it. You should taste I it though, it. right out of the jar first, and it's right. going to hit you. It's I've I actually have not had store bought kimchi, but if I had to guess what it tastes like, it's either going to taste diluted, um, like not have that that pungent yeah. I don't taste, think it's be the or taste. it's going to be over the top sour. All right, yeah, um, like I said, I'm just going to look up a recipe and make it myself. <laughs> you can. Yeah, I'd rather do that. It's just yeah. something with, it, it's, I don't know, something that's sitting in a jar of and you don't, for a while kind of But that's the But that is the kimchi. Me. I mean, they're they're made at factories, so they make yeah. in bulk quantities. Um, but that is the fermentation process, too. I mean, you can make kimchi, and it can last years mm. if it's properly stored. Um, and it just develops that deep, deep, you know, fermented flavor, but kimchi in itself, it's just a wonderful, healthy food. Julia, this is probiotic. your fault that we talked about food. Uh, again. We're all gonna go home and be like, no, 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 no. yeah. Uh, oh, I yeah, I definitely. Yeah, I gotta eat a big lunch because I got a meeting tonight. So, yeah, okay. tell everybody the website and how they can get in touch with you. Um, I my website is Mindy Moves M O V E S M D dot com. Um, I'm also on Facebook, which is also just. Mindy Perschowski, um, Maryland Realtor, and um, you can email me, MindyMovesMD, at gmail.com as well. And the, your Facebook page is on your website as well? It is. Okay, so mm-hmm. people can get to it. Mindy, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Julia, nice meeting thank you. you. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> so if you have an idea or someone you would like to hear on podcast, or if you would like to come on, let me know. Send an email to podcast at harfordcountyliving.com and I will do my best to either get that person on, get you on, or talk about the idea that you wanted me to talk about. And also, if you can, please, please, please leave a full review at lovethepodcast.com forward slash harco living. Again, that's lovethepodcast.com forward slash harco living. And also, please follow the Facebook page, Harford County Living with Rich Bennett. Again, it's facebook.com forward slash HCL show. What I tend to do is when you leave a full review and you follow the Facebook page, either or, or both, hopefully both, because it's a better chance for you, I do contests, or not contests, I give away things every once in a while, whether it be gift cards or something else. This is your chance to win. And you can enter, well, of course, you can only leave like the page once, but they're full reviews as many times as you want because you can leave a full review for certain episodes or for the podcast as a whole. And even if you liked it five years ago or left a review five years ago, you're in the drawing each time I do it. So again, you know, for the reviews, go to lovethepodcast.com forward slash harco living and please follow and like our page at facebook.com forward slash h c l show and i want to leave you with these words that a very wise man taught me at broadcasting school if it is to be it is up to me i want to share an amazing experience i had with tar hill construction group when i needed to install a new roof on my home let me tell you they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor, focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. 
It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's best roofing contractor and best home improvement contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Heel Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410 410- 6387021 experience the excellence and community impact for yourself tar hill construction group building excellence one roof at a time